Hey guys, welcome to Monday. It's another beautiful Monday. Some of you may have it off. If you are, what are you doing today? How are you thinking today? How are you choosing to feel today? It's Monday Motivational Mastery episode number five. This is Dr. Corey with the Diet Doc. And hmm, the topic today, are you a health coach who struggles with weight? I received an email from a coach really having a difficult time personally with some food stuff, with weighing herself and being okay with that number that she's seeing on the scale. She's going through some hormonal changes, working with a doctor. Uh, so she has some objective support, a team that she can rely on for information, but it's still, she just feels really emotional, volatile, and just kind of all over the place and a bit chaotic. And she's in this place emotionally where she wants to make some, take some very impulsive actions. She wants to lower her carbs that always seems to be kind of the first line of defense, right? Lower your carbs, like that'll do the trick. She's scared of gaining weight and she's retaining a lot of water right now because of the medications that she's taking. But she also has a trip coming up and so feels this level of urgency to drop some pounds and feel leaner and feel more confident. So she's like, how can I even be a good coach when I feel so out of sorts and out of control and like I can't even handle my own stuff, right? I need to get it together. I'm sorry I'm such a mess. First, guys, you have heard me say this over and over again. We are not the only ones who struggle with this. Um, there are plenty of days when you know, I hear that voice in my head like, why can't I get this together? What's up with my motivation today? How come all I'm thinking about is food? How come I want to eat and stuff in my face everything that I can get my hands on? I will never starve myself again. Many of you know that um, early in college, I struggled with anorexia. That will never happen. Um, I will never binge. I just won't. Will I overeat sometimes? Absolutely, I will. Does Tony Robbins wake up every morning and just like he is on stage, jump out of bed and he's like super excited to start his day? I highly doubt it. I'm anticipating that he probably does have moments, no matter how practiced he is in positive thinking and having that champion mindset, that he struggles sometimes and he has to consciously and deliberately work at and put effort into changing his mind and changing his emotion and making that shift. So, you know, in my response to her, what I was discussing, number one, on a practical level, doing something extreme is not going to get her where she needs to be. Um, I wanted her to recognize that if we're talking her mental game, right? Her mindset that she is writing a story in her mind by the way that she's thinking about being a bad coach because of the circumstances that she's currently in. And the story that she's writing is untrue. If you think about the reasons that we go into different professions and occupations, um, you know what? A lot of therapists really struggled and they were interested in figuring out their own personal issues. So started doing a lot of research, wanted to get more education, and now they're in a helping profession. Same thing with coaches, guys. Think of all the people who have lost weight, struggled with weight for a very long time, and now feel like they have the competence because of their own experience and then additional education to now be working with other people, okay? It's because of our experiences many times and the struggle that we've been through that now we feel confident and competent enough to begin working with people. The other thing to remember is that, 
Like if there's one superpower that is common among high achievers, and by high achievers, I mean people who succeed long term, it's that they learn how to learn. So this coach is in a place right now of struggle and it's within that struggle that she has a massive opportunity to ask some very powerful questions of herself and to shift into this mode of, okay, what can I take from this experience? Obviously, if I'm experiencing this emotion, it's very, very important to me that I feel competent to be able to work with the people who have similar struggles than I do. But do you guys remember the, like, you get to pick the ending books? So you had a number of different choices and you got to pick like one through five or whatever. I remember those when I was younger reading those. So you have a choice to write the ending of the story. And this coach is choosing the worst possible ending. Okay? It's just like that. So, you know, here's a better and more true ending. She is a better coach because she is enduring this experience. And that word enduring is really, really important. She is, she could choose to avoid it. She could choose to move out of it. She could choose to distract herself. And maybe in some moments she is. Or, like I said, she can choose to meet this challenge, okay? Meet this struggle with joy in that she gets to work through it. That is the mindset of a champion. That is the mindset of someone who can be long-term successful, okay? She can help her clients now in a way that other coaches can't. We all know coaches who go into coaching after, you know, having maybe one experience that now they think they are able to profess their expertise around. Anyway, so, you know, learning takes place because, because we make mistakes. And the trick is when we fall down, when we, when we have a setback, uh, Phil Stutz, he calls them glitches. So when we go through a glitch, the trick is to be able to recover quickly. There is nothing wrong with what she's going through right now. The only thing that would be wrong is if she chooses not to engage the recovery. Okay? So without the recovery, we can't learn the skills that we need in, o- in order to move forward with a new level of complexity, okay? The struggle has to be there in order for us to learn and become more confident in our abilities to help other people and to help ourselves. So really quick, I wanna go over the three things because this is what I recommended to her as well. She can, as part of her recovery, offer herself some level of self-compassion, okay? This is not a woo-woo thing. People, there is plenty of research on self-compassion and its value in helping us reduce shame and to move forward with our goals and to be able to meet emotion that is perceived as uncomfortable, meet it, embrace it, accept it in order to take the next best step forward. The three principles of self-compassion are number one, self-kindness. So in this situation, I asked this coach, imagine that a friend of yours is also struggling with something similar. She's in a teaching position, right? What would you say to her? How would you respond? Now your job is to respond to yourself with that same level of kindness and empathy. It doesn't mean that you're kind of letting yourself off the hook. That's not what self-kindness is. It offers you the ability to relieve the distressing emotion in order then to make the next best decision. The second principle of self-compassion is a sense of common humanity. So to remember and to remind yourself that I'm not alone in this, 
not the first person to struggle with not just weight gain and bloating from medication, but this sense of, like, I'm not good enough. How can I go through this and feel such discouragement um, and be able to help people? You're not the first person to feel that way. And there are plenty of people who have gotten through it successfully, okay? And what do they do? What makes them different? Well, they meet the struggle with a sense of joy and opportunity that I get to be here. This must be important to me if I'm feeling this. And so what am I going to do with it? They go into problem solving mode. The third component of self-compassion is mindfulness. And this is what we've talked about in terms of meeting our thoughts, recognizing that story, the string of words that we're putting together that are going to dictate how we feel about something and move us into a certain space or emotional place um, with this level of non-judgment. So just to be able to see it, to be able to observe it, and not believe the story and follow it down the rabbit hole, so to speak, but to see it, observe it, and then a lot of times be able to let it go or dissect it a little bit and ask for the exceptions, um, the alternatives, okay, so that we can begin writing a new one. All right, your Monday Motivational Mastery episode number five If you guys want to go back and listen to all the others that I've recorded, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash the diet doc weight loss. And there is a motivational mastery playlist. Go forth and have a very motivational Monday. Thanks, guys.